Are you ready? Yep. You want to give us a quick little take on how this has worked itself out the past few days? Yeah, it was uh, when I got hurt. I guess I had a few weeks to kind of, uh, you know, assess things and, you know, see, see what I kind of envisioned, you know, for myself and what was fair to the kids on this team and what was fair to the coaching staff and myself and everyone involved. And I came back and I was feeling good, but there, there's a little bit of a, you know, I, I couldn't match the intensity that these kids were, were bringing every day. I didn't feel, and uh, to me, you know, not being able to do that is a disservice to them because that's kind of how I've always played. My game was intense and playing at a high level. So, uh, and also seeing kids sit out and not playing and, you know, trying to find their way to the NHL. If, if I'm in there and I'm not pulling my weight or doing what I need to do and I know I'm not, then it's not fair to them. Was it a mental thing more than a physical thing then? Yeah, I'd say it'd be more mental for sure. Yeah. So what's next for you? Well, right now uh, I'm hoping to go play uh, just at the Spangler Cup and maybe go play with my brother a little bit here and, and yeah, I'll be done. So this is, I know this is my last year and uh, I'll kind of see where it goes over the next few weeks, but I'd really like to go uh, play with my brother and play at that Spangler Cup. It would be pretty cool to do, you know, before I retire. Is this considered a retirement then? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm done. So, uh, um, but like I said, the only the only way I'll be playing the rest of this year is if uh, I get to represent Canada at the Spangler Cup and, and get to go play with my brother. As far as you kind of mentioned it there, um, you know, the, you're seeing these guys coming out and, and putting their lives on the line. You mentioned that last week. Is that is it just a mental thing that just you couldn't get over that hurdle uh, once you saw it? That's a big part of it for me, uh, to be brutally honest. I I was sitting on the bench and kind of looking down and I, I could see it in their eyes, you know, and I could see everything they're putting into it. And, uh, you know, and I'm I'm not able to match that and I'm not able to put that same same focus and intensity into my game. And uh, it, so it was hard for me to play at the level I needed to. And it was hard uh, to watch kids sit out for me. And yeah, men, but the mental part was a big part of it. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't really know what else to say after that. This just creep in recently. Did you feel it coming at all last season? No, I mean at the start of the year, I felt great. Uh, camp, I thought I was playing really good at camp, uh, and then I kind of got hurt in that Washington game, and it lingered and lingered for three weeks, and then finally it got hurt more, and then I finally had to sit out for about two and a half, three weeks there. Uh, but then when I got back and felt healthy, felt good. But I, I do look at that schedule coming up. Uh, and it's compact games every day, and I, I don't know if, if uh, with the way the league's played, with the physicality in this league, if, if I could even physically hold up the rest of the season. I mean, you look at four and five games a week sometimes, and uh, yeah, that definitely, I looked at that part of the schedule and it scared me for sure, just to, just to see that. And like I said, with the physicality of the league, so uh, that part played a lot into it too, though. I mean, there, there's, there was a lot of, you know, factors that really played into the whole thing. As far oh, gotcha. you joked uh, last week about you know talking about coaching when we caught up with you during media day, but I mean, did, now with this announcement today, is that creep up in your mind? You do have a lot of friends, a lot of former colleagues of yours that have moved into coaching either with the Blackhawks or other organizations. Any thoughts on staying in the game, or is this just an opportunity to to take a step back? Yeah, I think uh, you know once once I'm done the Spangler, if if I get to do that, and once I get to play, uh, you know maybe there I'll re I mean I've been thinking about it to be honest for last year or so when especially last year but I think once that's kind of settled and the dust settles then I'll really start to see what I can do after but I would like to probably do broadcasting or something along that lines uh, follow you and mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think that's suits me the best maybe I I would maybe coach uh, once my kids are a little older but they're pretty young right now and I know uh, playing hockey the last four years, you're not around very much, so uh, it's time to spend time with them and uh, and then see, I guess, what kind of comes up. But uh, I wouldn't totally count out anything, but uh, I would see TV being the, the lead lead thing I would like to do. What is playing for this organization at this level and in the NHL just meant for you over the years? Yeah, I get pretty emotional talking about it. It's uh, man, like in, in 2005, I was working at Sportcheck. You know what I mean? Like selling clothes and 
and rollerblades and two years later I'm you know in the Western Conference you know I'm playing in the NHL and three years later in the in the Western Conference finals playing the Detroit Red Wings so uh, things moved pretty quick over a three-year span especially when I came to Chicago things started to snowball fast and um, then you win a Stanley Cup and you make friends like all, all the guys on that 2010 team were all very close and I still have some of my greatest friendships from that team and, and I'm sure I will till the day I die so uh, yeah this organization man I, I really can't uh, begin to say how much that means to me and you know, it, it's given me everything I have today. How tough was it to get a couple of healthy scratches I didn't know if that's something you had to deal with ever before in your career. Did that play into this at all? Was there any? Well, it wasn't. I, I was healthy. It was me and Kanger talked about, and I told him I couldn't play. Or it wasn't so much uh, sitting out because of my play or anything. It was more the fact that we looked at games, and uh, I was coming back from injury, and we saw back to backs right away, and uh, we didn't want to throw me into two games at once. So that was kind of our thought process on that. Is it kind of just a thing of father time, just catching up real quick out of yeah. nowhere? You hear about these athletes, it just comes and goes right away like that? Yeah, like physically at camp and everything, I felt good. I thought I was skating good and felt good. And until I got hurt in Washington, I, I really felt really good. And uh, when I came back, I do too. But uh, I, I have been through the ringer, you know, the last seven years. I've had, uh, you know, two hip surgeries, an ACL, uh, hand reconstruction. Uh, groin, two groins. So I've had uh, a lot of scarring and a lot of issues that affect me on a daily basis. And that's just something you deal with, though, as a hockey player. But and and then every scar and everything's worth it uh, for the career I've been able to put through, and I'm proud of them. But uh, they do take its toll, and some mornings it makes it pretty hard. Now, when you look back at your career, what do you take away from these 14 years throughout playing and all over the place? Yeah. Um, real, like, you know, when I was 19 and, uh, I got, uh, told I was going to go to Providence as a 19 year old and, you know, I flew out and my grandma drove me and she was crying like I was never going to come home, you know, and I remember that moment my whole life. So it was, uh, it was a great moment for me and it was something that I'll always remember, but yeah, it's time to, it's time to come home now. I'm sure there's a lot of excitement too. You get to spend more time with your family. I know you've been away from them during your time here with the Ice Hogs, but I know it's bittersweet, but it has to be exciting to know what that next step is with, with everybody by your side. Yeah, it's exciting. I think uh, uh, I've put a lot into it. And, you know, at the start, you're like, ah, I'm not going to retire till I'm 40, you know, and then five years ago, I'm not going to retire till I'm 38. And then this year, I'm like, shit, you know, <laughs> 33. But, um, but everyone I seems to get, you know, it gets younger and younger, you know, from when I started, you know, um, when I was 19 till now. And uh, uh, it's something that came faster than maybe I would have liked. But at the same time, it's just the way everything's going. And you, you got to get with the times and uh, you got to always evolve and uh, be willing to change and do things in, in your life. And that's what I got to be willing to do. You'll be able to ride away with no regrets, no looking no. over your if, if I didn't come do this, I'd regret it, though. Yeah, for sure. If I didn't come to Rockford and and come to NHL camp, I, I would have been sitting at home wondering what if, for sure. So that would have been a regret. This is, uh, I laid it all on the line and, you know, it didn't work out, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I got, you know what, the biggest thing I got to come back was come back and, you know, gain some humility again. You play in the NHL so long, I think you forget what the real world's like and what these guys go through. And, uh, you know, the, everyone's still here that, you know, a lot of guys are still here from, uh, you know, when I was here a long time ago and, you know, when you were announcing the purists back there, that story that no one believes, but it's, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like the whole, the whole thing, just getting that whole uh, feeling that, uh, man, I, what it actually took to make the NHL and seeing these kids, what they go through, and it puts a lot of things into perspective coming back. Well, there's a lot of kids that look up to you to this day, even guys in the Rockford Ice Hogs locker room right now. I mean, I know a lot of people have asked you questions, but what's probably the biggest piece of advice when you see these young guys looking to have a career like yours as long as it's been and as successful as it's been? Yeah, you got to you gotta fight, man. You just got to give everything you got, and you got to enjoy the days in between. And, um, 
always trying to get better is the big thing and looking at ways to get better but uh, when it's your chance you know you got to fight for it and you know if you're not if you don't like something ask questions too that's the big thing I think a lot of people don't ask questions and they're scared to, to do that and I think over my career I've asked a lot of questions and maybe pissed some people off but I think asking questions ultimately got me an opportunity because I was a fifth rounder and maybe I wouldn't have got that so I think at the you know fight for your career that's it's short a letter, uh, you know, to the organization, to the fans. What was going through your mind when you when you wrote that? Yeah, it was pretty emotional, you know. You think about it, because I can still remember that day like it was yesterday, you know, getting called up to the front of the bus and and Gordo uh, telling me I was traded. And I, I was, you know, he kind of brought me out of the sewer and helped me become a hockey player again. So I owe him pretty a lot, a lot to my hockey career. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, – he turned me – in, into a confident player again and I was you know top 10 in scoring as a rookie in the AHL and things were going great and you know I'm like man I'm going to be in the NHL at some point and then he calls me to the front of the bus I'm like I'm getting up to the NHL this is my time and now you got traded so it was just like it was such a crazy crazy uh, I guess circumstance and things you know changed so drastically and differently and it was uh it was a pretty wild day and pretty wild time and I, I really remember it like it was yesterday. What was your family's reaction to your decision, and did they try to talk you out of it? Um, my brother is the big. He's always kind of told me that. Uh, I, I I text him a couple of times after games, like, you know, I, what do you think? And he's like, oh, you can still. He's like, man, you can still play. There's no doubt about the playing aspect. He goes, but how do you feel? And I'm like, I don't know. And, you know, I, I feel good, but I don't know mentally if I can get engaged. And then. I called my dad and he's like, well, if you feel like that, then, you know, maybe you should consider things. And uh, I talked to my dad too, and he's always been a realist. Uh, I remember when I wasn't playing very well in Rockford actually in 2007 and I called him and I was like, you know, screw this, I'm not playing, the coach isn't playing me. And he's like, well, come sell tractors with me. You know, <laughs> he doesn't care. And we kind of had that same conversation. It was kind of crazy about a week ago, you know, I was like, you know, I'm I'm out in Chicago. I'm getting hit every shift, and he goes, "What are you crying about? You never cried about this when you were engaged and in carrying, you know, and, and playing. You just played hockey." So he's like, "Maybe you got to think about things too." So you know, you get two people who watched me very close and who I counted on a lot throughout my career, my brother and my dad. And when they kind of tell you that thing, it, it it makes you think even deeper into the situation. And and uh, they definitely helped me get through it.